and I love the the whole noun set that you guys built. Awesome job. Uh, yellow is also my favorite color. Uh, I don't know if people. I don't know if Funny. people got that from Unchained Summer, but like, you know, the yellow <laughs> circle, like that is my, that's my like soul color. The yellow heart is my soul heart. <laughs> so so nice. funny anecdote about that, a, a quick anecdote about that. In July of last year, the TNS team was talking about launching a DAO-like thing, an Unchained club. And we were trying to think of a name, you know, we didn't really want to call it TNS DAO. We wanted something unique. And we were like, well, you know, maybe we can try to take one of the circle emojis that hasn't been taken yet. Cause you know, faces got blue and like a couple, a couple others, optimism had red. We're like, how about yellow? Cause as you can see, you know, TNS, we got the yellow. So like, all right, we'll take yellow. It wasn't two days after we had that discussion yeah. on chain summer, yellow circle. I'm like, God damn it, Jesse, you stole our circle. Yeah. <laughs> but well, we figured no, we can, got, we can join customers. You guys can have it. Yeah. It's good. It's CCO. <laughs> you know, That's it's, right. We can all share the yellow circle. Welcome back to Zero Pod, a CC Zero podcast about enjoying Ethereum, brought to you by the Noun Square On Chain Media Collective. I'm your host, Tony Hawk. My co host today is Mr. Ben Boddy. And our guest today is Jesse Polak, uh, Coinbase's head of protocols, contributor number one for their Ethereum L2 base. He's also the co founder of Oak Currency, owner of the Christmas Eve Snowman number 555, and just an all around on chain Chad. Welcome to Zero Pod, Jesse. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. I've been looking forward to this for months at this point. I think we've been Amazing. talking about it for a while and um, have been a huge fan of the Noun Square and the Zero Pod and all the work that y'all have done. And so I'm really honored to be here. I love it. Well, I guess we could start by saying uh, happy Bitcoin ETF approval day for yeah. those listening. It's no longer that day, but today we're recording on the day that uh, Gary Gensler finally did did the deed and uh, approved the ETF. So h- how do you feel as someone that's been working in crypto for so long, working at Coinbase, you guys have been super involved. How does this day make you feel? Yeah, well, I feel like, you know, I saw someone tweet, there's no coincidences. And this is the, I think, uh, 12 year anniversary of Hal Finney running, like tweeting, I'm running Bitcoin. I saw um, that. Yeah, I saw that. And I thought that was just beautiful of like, you know, it, a lot of us have been on this journey for a really long time. Like I started working in crypto in 2012. I think at that point I thought, and a lot of us thought, Oh, like this is going to happen really quickly. Like let's, <laughs> it, why not? Why wouldn't the world be excited about this kind of better form of money that can upgrade the system? But um, I think in fact, it's taken a little bit longer. Um, mm-hmm. And so I think we see today as, you know, one more milestone along the way towards the world coming on chain. And we're excited about an ETF because it's going to give more people access. Um, it's going to make, uh, you know, these things more legitimate in the eyes of many people. Um, obviously, it's a huge testament to, to Coinbase and the role that Coinbase has played for the last decade, you know, how integral they are to um, all the ETFs that are going live. So I think we're excited, um, but also uh, we're not letting this uh, force us to lose sight of why we're here or what this is all about. Um, this isn't about more investment and more trading and more financialization. Um, this is about building a new internet. Uh, it's about building a new platform for the world where, you know, new economy where everyone can come on chain. They can be on a level playing field, um, regardless of where they are in the world, reg- regardless of where they're from in the world. Um, and they can build new businesses. They can create new creativity. Um, and the ETF, uh, is a marker that says we're making progress, but right. we want to stay focused and we're going to stay focused on um, the, the hard work that I think is still required in order to make that world come true. Well, sometimes the most uh, prescient observations come from a little bit outside of our bubble. And when I was telling my wife about the ETF approval, she was kind of like, okay, I don't get it. And I explained it a little bit more. And she said, well, like, why are you excited about this? You're always talking about how you want people to be unbanked and you want them to you know, take care, control of their own stuff. This doesn't sound like that at all. So what would you say to my wife in answer to that question? Why is this a good thing if we want people to be on chain and, and have their own self-custody, et cetera? Yeah, you know, I I think, like I said, the ultimate mission is bringing people on chain. It's putting people on this open uh, financial system, leveling the playing field for everyone. And I think on that journey of bringing people on chain, um, there's still a lot of trust we need to build. And I think 
I see this as a milestone where um, a a lot more people are going to see this and be like, oh, this is actually trustworthy. Um, yeah, maybe we heard some bad thing in the news, but now we're hearing this positive thing in the news that we've reached a milestone uh, in trust. Um, also, it's just going to let a lot of people own crypto for the first time. And I think generally what we've seen with with crypto and the kind of journey of individuals coming on chain is, you know, first you buy a little bit and then you use it a little bit and then you buy a little bit more and then you use it a little bit more until you're like totally on chain. And yeah. that process usually starts when you start owning, when you start really being a part of this transformation, this evolution. And so, um, yes, you know, would I prefer people to be owning in their you know, self-custodial wallet? Absolutely. But for a huge percentage of the population, that's not a viable first step. And so yeah. what this is going to do is it's going to allow people um, to have an easy first step uh, that lets them get started. And then from there, they're going to get their Coinbase account. Uh, they're going to set up their first self-custodial wallet. They're going to you know, get their first Ethereum, uh, earn it, uh, or buy it. Um, they're going to set up a smart contract wallet. You know, they're going to start living this, this future and start being on chain and start seeing um, how much this new economy can change their lives. And so I think that it's really all about creating stepping stones that, that lets us get to that future that brings everyone in. I think that rings true for me too. I think when I first started getting into crypto, it was like, you know, you're using whatever onboarding you you first saw, right? In my case, it was mm -hmm. a, a company called ShakePay up here in Canada. And I was just buying, you know, every week. And eventually I learned about self-custody. You know, I got I got pilled totally. on all that stuff. But it does take, it takes time. It's a process. So. It's a journey. We're awesome. all on the journey. And speaking well, of journeys, how, yeah, how did you get into crypto? Like where, where was your journey and your onboarding experience like back then? How did I get into crypto? Uh, my um, spring of my first year of college in Southern California, I was sitting at a lunch table and I sat down across from this guy who I'd never seen before. We started talking and he told me how he had just quit his job as a lumberjack and driven across the country <laughs> and was, you know, heading up the coast um, after doing kind of a week on our campus, hanging out with a friend um, to join a company called Coinbase uh, and work on this thing called Bitcoin. Uh, and that was the first I'd ever heard of Bitcoin. And he told me about it. I uh, went home, I read the white paper, I bought a little bit on Coinbase um, in kind of spring of 2012. That person was Olaf Carlson Wee, who was driving up to join Coinbase as the first employee. And we kind wow. of, you know, totally randomly met. Um, and that was kind of when I started. And then um, that year I started a company that was working kind of in crypto, working on identity, working with crypto companies. Um, and I did that for five years. Um, and then ultimately when that business didn't work, um, you know, we'd worked with other crypto companies like Bitfinex and BitMEX. Um, and I'd always wanted us to work with Coinbase, but you know, our product wasn't good enough. Uh, it didn't really make sense. <laughs> and when we were winding down the business and trying to figure out where would we go, uh, I reached out to Olaf. And I was like, hey, we're trying to figure out what's next. Do you think Coinbase would be interested in talking to us? Um, and he kind of shepherded us through a whole process. And that led to Coinbase making an offer to acquire our team. And Yeah, uh, I was going to say, I thought I remembered and, reading that where they basically kind of acquired just the team, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah. Well, inter like kind of funnily, what happened was um, they made an offer to acquire our team. My whole team decided to sell to Twilio instead. Because right. um, they wanted to continue working on identity stuff. But I had been so excited about crypto since I first learned about it in 2012, been five years. Um, and I was like, I, I don't want to work on identity. I want to work on crypto. And so I joined Coinbase kind of just as a solo person. Um, and then over the next few years, I, I recruited back um, four of the other or three of the other uh, four people. Um, oh, wow. And we got a, you know a chance to build together for another, you know, ranging from two to five years at Coinbase, which was awesome. Yeah, amazing. Uh, you were named to Coindesk's list of most influential people in crypto for 2023. Congratulations for that. Uh, just wanted to ask what that was like to be sort of recognized for you and your team's contributions to the space. It was the first time I'd ever been named to a list. That, like my right. whole life, you know, like I've never um, gotten some, you know, the list naming things. So that not, was not even like phenomenon. the high school yearbook. You didn't even get like most likely to succeed in crypto or something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't get that. I went to a Quaker school, um, uh, which is like, you know, a certain, you know, it's kind of like this communitarian culture. And so there were no That's lists. Cool. Um, no lists. I guess all. like the, the, the closest thing I had was in high school, Oh, my senior year of high school, I was the MVP of our of our soccer team. 
And so that was like, it wasn't a list. It was like, you know, the one person, but that was kind of an award that I've won. This is the second award I've won. Um, Amazing. Not really award, you know, most influential over. I think, um, you know, it was an honor to, to see that, but also just to get to do what we've did over the last year. Um, and I obviously played some role in that, but, um, you know, really the team led the way and the community led the way and um, I just got to ride the tide. And so um, I thought it was really cool to see that recognized um, and to see people really like observe and take note of, um, you know, this whole collective of people came together and um, brought something into the world that I don't think anyone really expected a year ago. Like if you poll people, like what was going to happen in 2023, I don't think they would have said like base is going to take the world by storm, but um, that's what happened. And that was really the result of hundreds, thousands of people all over the world coming together to make it happen. And so um, that felt really special to be recognized. And um, the next feeling after that feeling of specialness was, oh boy, we have to live up to this now. Like 2023 was a good start, but uh, we're just getting started. The, the, the journey that we are on is going to be a long one. It's going to be a hard one. Um, and uh, we're at the very beginning. And so now, you know, we've, we, we took that moment to say, wow, this is cool. And then we kind of put our heads back down and said, let's get back to work. Um, we got to bring the world on chain. Uh, and we have, you know, a few orders of magnitude uh, in terms of growth to do. And so uh, let's get to it. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, and looking at your uh, kind of one of your recent tweets, it sort of mentioned some of the plans for the year ahead. Um, you know, and when I read that, it, it makes sense to me, obviously, being immersed in this space. But there's a, a few key points there that I thought, you know, that in onboarding a lot of new people, um, mm -hmm. some of this doesn't even make sense. Like, uh, make it dead simple to on and off ramp. People are like, what do you mean? What is this off ramping? <laughs> do you know what I mean? When I talk to people that have no idea and I'm onboarding new people. Um, and, and I think I kind of understand some of these plans and trying to make it. So when someone connects to something, they don't have to worry about like getting cash in there and then swapping it and bridging it or any of this stuff, they just start using things. And that, I think is going to be a big game changer and obviously mm -hmm. something that you're working on um, when it's mentioned in here. Uh, so, you know, and on these points here, you've got uh, accelerating decentralization, driving down fees across the board, making smart wallets, the default, making it dead simple to on and off ramp, bringing Coinbase and others on chain and making the super chain seamless. Now that's, there's a lot in that to unpack, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, here's this little nugget on Twitter, but ultimately that's, that's like a whole paper Huge. in itself. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> there's yeah, a whole blog so... post and then behind that blog post, there's whole yeah. teams of people who yeah, are working yeah, exactly, on it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So... You know, I, I, I think if you're like a, you know, a everyday person who's just learning about crypto, you read that list and you'd be like, what is this, what is this guy talking about? Like, this just yeah. sounds like gibberish. Um, you know, and, and I think that that's okay. At the end of the day, when I think about that, um, kind of like tweet and that blog post and that roadmap, um, really the audience for that is what I consider like our builder community. So it's yeah. the people who are seeing base and saying, Hey, we want to come build with you. And they're saying, what are you going to be working on? So how can we amplify that work? Um, yeah. and or, or even more so more... They're, they're standing at a, at a crossroads. Try, trying to decide which L2 they're going to build on too. And they yeah. want to hear from you, just, why should I build on base? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Not just which L2, but like which other technology choices do they make? You know, like yeah. do they, you know, bet their business that smart wallets are going to be a thing or not? And so yeah. I think our goal really was like putting out this kind of uh, like mission and the, the roadmap was to create clarity for those folks of like, what are we thinking about? What are we pushing on? Um, so we can ideally create space for them to come and build alongside us. Because at the end of the day, like base is not gonna be successful because of me or because of a small group of people who I'm working with in, in the core team. It's gonna be successful because thousands of people all over the world believe in that mission and then come together to execute against that roadmap. And so I'd say the roadmap piece really was targeted on those more kind of builders, the folks who are uh, creating on that developer platform. Now I'd say the one piece of that blog post that um, you know, I think was meant to reach the consumer audience and, and everyday people is the mission, which is that we want to build a 
global on-chain economy that increases innovation, creativity, and freedom. And that, the idea that we could have a new economy that anyone anywhere in the world can access, that makes it easier for you to build your business, easiest, easier for you to create your art, easier for you to live your life in a better way with more economic freedom, that is something that I think everyone should be able to understand. They should be able to read that and say, oh, this is something I want to be a part of. And then they should be able to look at the products that are built on base, whether it's the you know, financial products or the, the you know, creative products or the gaming products and be like, this is contributing to that mission. And this is letting me participate in this economy. It's letting me have more freedom. It's letting me be more creative. It's letting me innovate better. Um, and therefore, I'm experiencing this future that BASE is trying to achieve. And so, you know, we're, we're still continuing to workshop the language and refine it. But really, that's how I think about it. It's like the missions for everyone. It's meant to reach that kind of everyday person as well as the builders. And then that roadmap is really meant to be kind of a North Star and a lighthouse to say these are the, the investments that we're going to be making that should force multiply you and that should allow you to have more confidence in what you're building. Yeah, that's beautiful, man, because I think that mission that you mentioned is kind of core to why anyone got into crypto in the first place, you know, and then as things progress over time, you're like, well, you know, sending, just sending a bit of Bitcoin to someone is too slow or it's too expensive and you hear those arguments over the years. And now we're getting to this point where um, those scaling issues are becoming a non-issue. And it's more totally. just about um, all the user experience and uh, bringing that freedom to people and the sovereignty and all of those aspects that, you know, I feel like we all came for originally and saw. And uh, it's like it's all coming to fruition in this in this vision you guys have with BASE. Yeah. And I think, you know, like <clears throat> the, the other thing that I really like about the mission that we've you know, this mission has been a like incremental project. It's different than the one we started 2023 with. Uh, and it was like kind of a thing we were workshopping throughout um, the last few months. But another thing that really resonates to me is um, when you ask people like the question, like, are you happy with the economy? A lot of people have a really bad feeling about the economy, like in yeah. the United States and globally, right? They actually feel really let down by these systems. And I think there's something really intuitive about that. Especially the younger generation, like, which you guys touched on in your ads. Generation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Especially the younger generation. And so I think like the, the other thing that we're trying to connect up to people is like there's the possibility that we can have a better economy and that that's something that we can believe in and that when we have a better economy, it's going to let you be more creative. It's going to let you do your art because you're going to have a better platform to do that. Yeah. And it's going to let you innovate more. It's going to let you start your business because you're going to have a platform to do that. And at the end of the day, what that kind of translates to is, is more freedom, more happiness, and a, a better sense of well-being. And I think that connection of like in our current world, so many people feel so much negativity about the economy that they live in. And in this future, because of this new technology and because of the opportunity that we have to upgrade the system, there's such a bright opportunity for us to get people excited and happy and energized about the economy that they're going to be a part of. That creates this, um, I think, really powerful framing that's going to resonate with a lot of folks. And the craziest thing about that, Jesse, is that you're talking about the United States of America, you know, one of the most prosperous and free countries in the world. Totally. There's all these people globally who maybe don't even have that amount of freedom or prosperity imagine how they feel about the economy totally totally so we got a lot of work to do but you know the the the, the thing that i often say to our team is unless we know where we're going we can't get there and i think the goal of this kind of you know post that we made and, and the messaging we're going to do around it is like create clarity for ourselves and for all the people who we're building with of where we're going so once yeah. we all know that, and once we all believe in that future, we'll find a way to get there. Whether the six things that I wrote out are the right six things, we'll figure it out. It's and an if they're not the right things, we'll change the plan. Yeah. Roadmaps are more of a suggestion. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> Intentionality. Especially in a, especially in a decentralized ecosystem like base. Yeah. You know, like true. you can make, you can lay the best plans ever, and then you're going to get punched in the face. Like That's I've what people that. often <laughs> don't understand about Ethereum too. A lot of the times, I don't want to get off on that particular tangent, but people will criticize Ethereum for being slow moving or you know changing its mind. And it's like, yeah, it's a decentralized system. Like it's going to change its mind because it's not one totally. person deciding. You know, totally. it's emergent. But we, we, we exactly emergent. 
so we talked uh, a little bit about roadmaps there. And one of the questions I did want to ask you was just sort of about the direction for Co Coinbase. And a question a lot of people wonder is, you know, why did Coinbase decide to go the direction it did with base because you know they could have made a decision to go the way that uh, Binance did uh, with you know having uh, their own L1 chain like BNB. Uh, but what mm -hmm. you did decide to do was to do you know an Ethereum, a very Ethereum native L2, you know working hand in hand with the the team at at OP. So I'm just curious if you could talk a little bit about the intentionality behind that from from Coinbase and what it represents. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um... And we'd actually looked twice before at launching a uh, chain um, in Coinbase history, once in 2018 and once in 2020. And both times, kind of the only option was to launch a, a, a like L1 because um, there really was this idea of L2s didn't really exist. Um, and I think right. both of those times, the things that um, kind of set, caused us to say no was um, one that, you know, obviously would have been a really big technical investment um, and it didn't feel like we were kind of positioned to do that. But then two, and I think more importantly, um, it really felt like if we did that, we'd put ourselves on an island, you know, and like we would be off here building this L1. It would be disconnected from the broader crypto ecosystem. We'd be kind of fighting to pull people over there. Um, but that would kind of um, kind of position us outside and, and separate from all the other incredible builders in the ecosystem. And I think the thing that really felt different about this time and, you know, the way base came about was we started, you know, kind of working late 2021 with the idea of like, let's figure out how to bring Coinbase on chain, but we didn't know what it meant. And so we spent about a year like experimenting with different things, trying, failing, learning. Um, and I think through that year, we also saw this kind of emergence of L2s. And internally, as we were building, we saw that it was still really hard for us to build. Um, uh, and uh, there, there was like a missing platform kind of for our team that was still a really small team trying to build on chain. And so I think those two things kind of converged where it felt like, oh, wow, now like we have a really clear need. We've tried to build a bunch. The challenge we kept on running to is that we haven't had a platform. Like, let's go solve that. And then we also had a solution that felt values aligned, where it wasn't like, oh, the only option is go build an L1 and kind of isolate yourself from the broader ecosystem. But instead, there was an option for us to build it as an L2, which meant that we were by default connected to something much bigger than us in Ethereum. Uh, and also build on an open source MIT licensed technology stack and the OP stack in a way where all of the technical investment that we did make would contribute back to something that everyone could use. And those two things, I think, kind of gave us the like, you know, push us over the line. We were like, OK, now we can have our platform. We can be a part of something bigger than us and we can contribute back to that something bigger than us. And that and is kind of what led us. To. Have our cake and eat it too, and that—that's what led us to build base. And um, you know, it's—it's it's, it, when we first started building base, we we didn't know what to expect. Like, I was pretty nervous that we were going to launch base, and it was just going to be organ rejected, and people were going to be like, "No, like those guys, they're trying to centralize Ethereum, blah blah blah." Um, but I think in, instead, what we've experienced is just people being like fired up and seeing like the intentionality and the 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 way we've approached this, um, and saying like welcome, you know, come build with us. Crypto OGs are really skilled at uh, parsing authenticity, I think, in builders. And I think mm. that's a big part of it. Mm -hmm. You know, I think they can yeah, tell well, that, that Coinbase is not there to centralize Ethereum, you know, from. Yeah, well, there's that. Uh, uh, I'm trying to remember what it is. Nick Tomino has the like he has the Venn diagram, which is like uh, the tourists and the purists. That's it. It's tourists right. on one side and purists on the other side and then the middle. And I think that that's kind of like where Coinbase has been for a while. I think that's where Ethereum lives in a lot of ways. It's like, we've been here for like a decade, more than a decade now at this point. So clearly we're not just here for the fad, um, but we're also incredibly pragmatic. You know, we're not going to say like, we have to, you know, blah, blah, blah. Instead, we're going to say like, how do we find the best of um, what's possible and um, what the future is going to be and what's going to be possible in the future and, and make that a reality. And I really think about like, that's what it, uh, base is, you know, it's like, you know, we're trying to fill this gap of, we see what's possible with scaling Ethereum, but it's not there yet. How can we contribute to making that a reality? Um, and contribute to bringing, you know, those millions, billions of people on chain into that reality. And it's interesting because uh, obviously spinning up a layer two in the way you have with base <clears throat> could be done multiple ways. Uh, you know, there's already other layer twos and stuff, but 
you guys chose to use the OP stack and um, it kind of speaks to, I guess, that contributor ecosystem a little bit as well because it, it then opens up a wider base of builders that is, everyone's working together on on a larger picture here. Um, can you yeah. kind of speak to that a bit more? Yeah, no, I think that's exactly, I mean, there's a bunch of reasons we, we decided to build on the OP stack, but a big one was, you know, what I casually refer to as the super team, which is like, you know, this idea that there's, you know, hundreds, thousands of people all over the world who are contributing to this, this code base and that's open source and not just the code base, but also like the culture base um, and the governance base where, you know, the idea that we could have many chains that are like working together cooperatively to grow something bigger than any one of them um, is kind of a uh, like revolutionary idea. Yeah. Um, like yeah. it's, it's not the traditional way of thinking. It's not the way a lot of these other things have played out over the last five, 10 yeah, years. Everything kind of has and, a lot of like a siloed effect in a lot of cases, totally. whereas this is and like, so, let's everyone get together. Yeah. It's like everyone gets together. And I think that at the end of the day, a lot of that's governance. And I, a lot of what we've said is like, we believe, we believe that the parts can, the, some of the parts can be greater than the whole. And that if we all work together, we have the opportunity to create something that is much bigger than what any one of us could create alone. And that ethos and then the, the governance infrastructure that Optimism has been building to enforce that ethos, ethos with things like retroactive public goods funding um, and the you know dual house governance where you really value humans alongside capital, um, the technology that enables this from an open source perspective, from an interoperability perspective, um, and then all the incredible talent, um, uh, people all over the world who come together to believe in this. Um, I think that was a huge draw for us. Uh, and, you know, we're now a year in, we really, we started, we, we, we built the first kind of internal prototype in um, like late November of 2022, um, started talking about with optimism in like January. So it's been about a year since we started talking about this and thinking about this really. Um, and it's been such an incredible decision and so grateful for all of the collaboration um, with optimism and um, the whole super team and the whole ecosystem. Um, and, and, you know, you tomorrow is uh, retroactive uh, public goods funding round three is getting announced. One of the really cool things about that was that was the first round where um, other super chain chains were eligible. Right. And so, you know, I helped make a list of 100 projects that contributed to base, all of whom were completely eligible for retroactive public goods funding on a level playing field with people building on OP mainnet. Um, and that's that's and OP literally putting their money where their mouth is, right? That's OP putting their money where their mouth is. And like thus far, you, no one else is doing that. Like it, it just requires such a level of intentionality and, and vision, I think, for what's possible. Um, and I think people will get there because they'll see what's happening and they'll be like, oh, that's a good idea. But to take that risk and to be like, we're going to like believe in this thing that's bigger than one chain. I mean, that was a, that was a big strategic bet that they made and a big risk. And um, I think it's already starting to pay off in huge ways. Yeah. You mentioned that you are collaborating with OP and that's not just a buzzword. You guys actually entered into a, an arrangement whereby, you know, you guys are actually helping to develop the stack. Mm -hmm. Whereas you could have just said, you know, yoink, thanks for the OP stack. It's uh, MIT license or open source or what have totally. you. And, and just built on top of it. Instead, you're actually working with them and collaborating back and helping to build the super chain. Um, that kind of leads into a question that uh, Chris Corella gave us on Farcaster. We often uh, drop, you know, a little cast before these interviews and ask if people have any questions. And Chris, Chris popped up with this one, friend of the show. He's been on, on Zero Pub before himself. Uh, Chris asked, I'm interested in what the actual dynamics are like. Uh, when Coinbase or Base contributes to the OP stack, how does a team working at Base roll their sleeves up to work on, for example, EIP four eight four four and collaborate with others outside? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, and like one thing I'll say up front is it's not easy. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. figuring out how to work across a bunch of different organizations uh, and teams and get things done is very very challenging. Um, or even and, one organization. <laughs> or even one. I mean, even yeah. one team is hard, but like many teams is, is hard. And, and you know, it, it, it hasn't been easy with us. Like, and there's been starts and stops where, you know, I think when we first started working on it, like we tried to figure out, okay, how can we like just jump in and accelerate their existing work streams? And um, I think like they weren't quite set up to support that because like just adding people doesn't help. 
Um, and so I think the, the place that we've kind of uh, settled into right now, which I think is actually working really well, is um, we're, I think, getting a little bit more specific about uh, helping teams kind of own things end to end. And so an example of this is uh, 4844, um, where uh, we've been working on 4844 with OP Labs and Optimism for, you know, almost two years now. Um, and, you know, we've been driving a lot of kind of the, we drove a lot of the initial prototypes. Um, uh, and then uh, we worked with all the core devs to help them kind of refine, although they did a lot of the work there. And then as we've started getting towards launch, the base team is owning what's called Ecotone, which is the launch that will add support for 4844 um, and also the full Denkun upgrade. So uh, 1153 and 4768, I think. Um, and we're kind of owning that end to end. So we're going to do the whole release process. Um, you know, we're, we're, we've been writing the specs, doing the implementation, collaborating with OP uh, labs for reviews and, and um, uh, kind of the process, but kind of chunking that out and saying, hey, this is a really good thing for the base team to drive. Um, we also just saw this with another core development team, uh, Test and Prod. They just built this thing called Span Batches, uh, which yeah. is going to lower fees on on base and, and other existing OP stack chains by like six to ten percent. Um, but more importantly, make it much much cheaper for um, low throughput OP stack chains. Um, they'll reduce cost by like ninety five percent. They did the specs for that. They built it. They're running the release process for it. Cool. Um, and I think the thing that this is letting us do is it's letting us like parallelize a little bit. So rather than kind of stepping on each to each other's toes, um, we're able to kind of run in parallel, making progress on a bunch of things, you know, at the same time. And so while we're doing 4844 and Test and Prod was doing span batches, the OP labs team has really been heads down on getting fault proofs live. Um, uh, and so that's been awesome because it's meant we've been able to make progress on decentralization, costs, scalability, all at the same time. Um, internally on the base team, um, we now have kind of like a pod, you know, team of people who are just full time on core development. Um, and so that's a mix of Ethereum L1 core development, um, you know, like 4844, uh, as well as OP stack core development. Um, that's led by this uh, guy, Roberto Bayardo, um, who, you know, is a legend at Google, was a legend at Google, um, has been at Coinbase for two years, has been leading all of our 4844 stuff and um, is now leading all of our OP stack implementation. So we have a really great little team of people that's uh, growing um, and we'll be making more and more contributions, working kind of in this collaborative way with um, uh OP labs. And the thing I'll say is like, we've come so far six months ago, we just like could barely make progress on anything together. And now it's like, we're meeting on a daily, weekly basis. Um, we're shipping things in parallel. We have really great lines of communication open. And I think we're starting to get to the point where um, we're going to be able to bring on more and more core developers. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's going to be really exciting because it's just going to less, you know, leverage more of the incredible talent in the space uh, to accelerate the OP stack. Amazing. Uh, and, you know, you, you obviously come across a lot of different uh, developers, builders, projects. What are some of the most exciting or your favorite projects at the moment on base? <laughs> Man, too, too hard to pick favorites. It is, uh, choose, choose one of your children I, right now. <laughs> I hate answering favorites the, questions. The Yellow but... Collective? Is that, is that the answer, right, right answer? answer. <laughs> yeah, <good. laughs> It's no, okay. I mean, you can just there's... say base paint the golden child. It's all right. We love, we <laughs> love, so we many love great, so many great projects being built on base and so much like diversity of energy, which really gets me excited. I mean, like today there was this fun little game called speed tracer. I don't know if you guys played speed tracer, oh, but I, yeah, I, play, I saw your tweet yeah, and it gave it a play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, I love that. Uh, like just such a fun little mini game. I feel like that we're starting to see a lot of those on base, which is like, casual mini games that you can play in like less than a minute uses cool on-chain mechanics in some way. Um, I expect we'll see a lot more of that. And I'm really excited to support builders who are building those sorts of games. I kind of feel like we're in the um, like 2007, 2008 um, Facebook era of gaming where yeah. Facebook like was like starting to when, give, when yeah, like farm farm exactly, <laughs> exactly. Right. That's exactly where we are. Like we're in the just pre farm bill on base. <laughs> um, uh, and so like, if you're built, if you're out there and you're, you want to build farm bill on chain, come talk to us and we'll, we'd love to support <laughs> you. Clash of clans on chain. No. 
<laughs> yeah, and it's actually fun. We're working with one of the original, like one of the Zynga founders right now, who's building a like oh, kind wow. of casual mini game on base right now that they're going to be Amazing. launching in, in hopefully the next couple months. Um, but he was around back then, and you know, it's he feels a similar way. So that's been really cool to see. Yeah, that's um, cool. so really excited about those sorts of things. Um, you know, super excited about uh, one thing that's coming up that relates to people who are interested in zero pod is the um, nouns builder migration. Uh, that's yes. about to happen where nouns builder has done all the audits to um, enable people to migrate their nouns builder DAOs from L1 to L2. Um, and so uh, we're going to be running a prop house to give grants to people who migrate from L1 to L2. Um, we're super that's excited awesome. to support folks who are building nouns builder DAOs on base. Obviously yellow collective is a great example of that. Um, you know, yellow yeah, that, collective that's why we have to launch. We have to get on there, get that provenance before all the Ethereum. Uh, yeah, exactly. First. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, well, yellow collective, like I, you know, did a prop to nouns builder to, to get a grant. And I saw that and I was like, Oh, we got to map the grant. And so we got Amazing. that, you know, right to Yellow's Builder. So uh, Yellow Collective, Thank so you. Yellow Collective is going to have, you know, resources to get started, you know, creating culture and um, proliferating the goodness of Yellow. And I love the the whole noun set that you guys built. Awesome job. Uh, yellow is also my favorite color. Uh, I don't know if people, I don't know if Funny. people got that from On Chain Summer, but like, <laughs> you know, the yellow circle, like that is my, that's my like soul color. The yellow heart is my soul heart. Um, so. So funny nice. anecdote about that, a, a quick anecdote about that. In July of last year, the TNS team was talking about launching a DAO-like thing, an on-chain club, and we were trying to think of a name. You know, we didn't really want to call it TNS DAO. We wanted something unique, and we were like, well, you know, maybe we can try to take one of the circle emojis that hasn't been taken yet because, you know, faces got blue and, like, a couple a couple others. Optimism had red. We're like, how about yellow? Because, as you can see, you know, TNS, we got the yellow. So we're like, all right, we'll take yellow. It wasn't two days after we had that discussion yeah. on Chain Summer. Yellow circle. I'm like, God damn it, Jesse. He stole our circle. Yeah. <laughs> but well, we figured no, we, can, got, we can join customers. You guys can have it. Okay. It's, it's CCO. <laughs> you know, That's it's, right. We can all share the yellow circle. Collective nouns. Accordion. Alligator. Balloon. Base. Bathtub. Candle. Chalkboard. Crayons. Clapper. Dolphin. Drain. Dumpster fire. Flip-flop. Farcaster arch. Folder. Gumball machine. Lemon. Lion. Locomotive. Macaron. Maki. Mocha pot. Nounish motorcycle. Nounie clock. Paper airplane. Pengu. Plunger. Pretzel. Price tag. Red flag. Retro radio. Robot chicken. Rooster. Rubber eraser. Scarecrow. Ship in a bottle. Skis. Slippery sign. Sloth. Small boy fishing. Snail. Spray paint. Starfish. Studio mic. Sunny optimism. Toucan. Traffic barrel. VHS. Viking helmet. Walkman. Super Soaker. World map. Worm. Yin Yang. Zorb. Coming soon to a layer two near you. Each channel's on Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, so I've, I've been really excited about all the nouns builder DAOs. Like base management has been doing such a great job, like creating culture on base. Um, you know, you mentioned base paint. Like, you know, I think what they've done is just incredible. Like thousands and thousands of artists earning, um, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars on chain all over the world. Such a great example of this new global on chain economy that's enabling more creativity, more freedom. Um, you love seeing that. By the that. way, a little bit of so, alpha. I, mean, I may or may not have spoken with Zach, one of the founders of base point basement right before this conversation we may or may not be doing a collaboration with uh, yellow collective for the launch so oh uh, yeah that's great yeah, so. i mean that's a i will say like for on-chain native organizations or products that are launching sponsoring or collaborating to to bulk buy a uh base paint day so that you put up like you know a thousand mints and it gets the theme for your product or brand i mean it's yeah. so cool you get yeah. like a yeah. forever asset um, and it like yeah, kind of captures Nouns the internet. It. it was really cool. Nouns did it. It was really cool. So I think like in terms of bang for buck, like that that's such a good way to, um, you know, activate and create some cool creativity. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like too many, too many projects to list. Um, yeah. But I'd say I'm just blown away by the level of creativity and um, innovation and excitement of people building on base and, Every day I get out of bed and I'm just like fired up because I know yeah. that there's gonna be something cool that I didn't expect coming on chain. You talked yeah, a little bit there sure. about grants and uh, mm -hmm. we, we wanted to formally thank the base team for the, the grant for the Yellow Collective. That entire grant is going directly 
into the treasury and it's going to be used to uh, to fund contests and commissions for uh, artists and creatives in the noun ecosystem and the base ecosystem. So thank you very much uh, for that. It's awesome to hit the ground running and, and be able to make some impact uh, right off the bat. Uh, I wanted to ask you about funding, uh, retro funding more broadly, because I think that's yeah. one of the sort of secret powers of the OP stack is this retro PGF, and, and you talked about it a little bit earlier in our conversation about how they made it eligible, how, you know, any builders eligible across the super chain. Uh, I'd like to just ask you your thoughts on that. Would, what do you think is the impact long term of retro PGF and other grants programs like what Base is doing with Gitcoin Stack, yeah. et cetera? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think it's hugely positive impact, like creating a culture where people are evaluated on the impact that they have and then rewarded for it. And it's not about what you promise, but it's what you deliver. I mean, that is such a hard culture to create, um, yeah. like, you know, in, in regular organizations, right? Like you have so much, you know, such a hard time evaluating people on impact. Um, and so I think the fact that optimism from the beginning has said, we're going to focus predominantly on retroactive funding um, is, is incredible. Um, and I think that the fact that they've opened it up to everyone building on the super chain and all these other super chain chains like base um, is also incredible. And it's going to enable more creativity, um, more activity, more, more innovation. And so we're, we're just so grateful to be a part of it. And, you know, I've gotten the, the, I've, I've had the privilege of getting to be a part of um, retroactive public goods founding uh, round two and round three. And I will say that the, level of progress and uh, improvement in terms of that process that they made between round two and round three was incredible. Incredible. Like so much more thorough, so much more rigorous, so many more smart people getting involved. I can only imagine what we're going to do to round four at round four and, and beyond. And so I think it's such a net positive for the ecosystem and for the world. And I expect it's going to have a transformative impact um, and lots of people will follow. Um, on the base side, we, you know, what we've been trying to do is we've been trying to learn from optimism and kind of like follow in their footsteps and uh, figure out how we can kind of fit in and complement and, and move quickly. And so, you know, we did a, a few prop house rounds in, in on-chain summer that I think went pretty well. That was awesome. Um, yeah. learned, a, learned a lot about getting, you know, botted and open voting and you know, have some reflections from that. Um, last yeah. quarter and this quarter, we've been doing these, you know, fast builder grants where they're similarly pr predominantly focused on, on retroactive. I'd say they're probably like 90% retroactive right now. And the idea is basically get, you know, one to five ETH grants um, into the hands of builders when they do cool things on base so that they can keep building. And I think one of the cool things about this is that's actually really complementary with optimism because, you know, the, the RPGF rounds, they can take a while, like it's every six months yeah. and the process is a few months and the, the, grants that you get are an OP and they have some restrictions on them. Um, and so they can't necessarily be like spent to like, you know, live your life, which is good and, and healthy. But I think the cool thing about like the fast grants that we're doing is they can be really complimentary. So you can do something, we can like see it and we we're turning around our grants right now in like three to five days. And so we'll see something cool that someone built on base. We'll shoot them a DM on Twitter, get them a, you know, one to five ETH grant, which could like, you know, pay their rent for the next couple months. And that can then give them the kind of space to keep building so that by the time the next like big RPGF thing comes around, um, they've actually haven't had to like stop. Uh, and I think like the thing that I really want to keep focusing on is how do we build a bunch of kind of diverse ways of getting resources into the hands of builders so that no matter who you are, no matter whether you're, you know, working nights and weekends, or this is your full-time thing, or you're in the United States where the cost of living is higher, or you're somewhere else where the cost of living is lowing, there's some way that if you are ambitious and creative and entrepreneurial, you can stitch it together and you can contribute to base and you can contribute to the optimism collective. And that can be, a thing that you do that is meaningful and uh, valuable and uh, you're rewarded for. And so I think we've made a lot of progress in the first year and I'm excited to make even more progress in the year ahead. When we had Benji on this uh, podcast, which was I think our second podcast actually, he was an awesome guest. He talked a little bit about what attracted him to optimism and he talked about it in the in the framing of it being like um, an anti anti martyrdom you know, sort of solution where people didn't feel like, didn't have to feel like they needed to be financial martyrs to work on things that really matter on chain. I thought that was a, a neat framing that stuck with me. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. You know, impact equals profit. 
as Optimism says, um, mm -hmm. it's their mission. And I think that that's, you know, we don't always live in a world where that's the case, but I think that like we were saying at the beginning about this mission, we can believe in a new economy. We can believe in a new world, new internet where um, that is the case and where no matter where you are in the world, if you're making a positive impact on that world, you have the opportunity to earn from it. You have the opportunity to live your life in a better way. Yeah, I love it's that. Awesome. And it kind it's of inspiring. speaks to Yeah, exactly. And and it kind of speaks to why uh you know, I think a lot of us love nouns as well. Um, you know, because of that public goods focus that it's kind of um leading towards. And yeah, I mean, I guess uh there's a, a level of curiosity what drew you to nouns as well. Um I, I mean, that's maybe an obvious thing, but I don't know. Maybe there's some other pathway yeah. that you found. I mean, have you seen that snowman? It's just beautiful. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's the it? thing. Some of us find it via pixel art. I waited like six months. I looked at the auction every day for that snowman. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Love like, it. it's not unsurprised. <laughs> like, I, I think listeners and y'all will be unsurprised to, to recognize that the things we're talking about with base and the mission and the things we're talking about with optimism and RPGF and grants and the things we're talking about with nouns all feel similar. Like yeah. there's a reason why, you know, I'm working on base and we're a part of optimism and I'm interested in nouns and the yellow collective is building like all of these things culture. have kind of, yeah, it's culture. You know, it's, it's, it's basically, there's a, a, a increasing number of people who I think share similar um, kind of viewpoints on the way the world should operate, which is that um, the world can uh, operate in more of an abundance mindset. Um, it can operate in more of a collective mindset uh, it can operate in more of a um, like a meritocratic mindset where everyone everywhere is on a level playing field. Um, and that technology uh, can be a driver of enabling that kind of transformation as long as we imbue that technology and the, the upgrades that that technology is enabling with a culture that aligns us towards the right things. And that combination, I think you see with base, you see with optimism, you see with nouns, you see with Zora, you see with so many of these, these projects, I think, have found the overlap in their Venn diagrams and are working together. And, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, trying to figure out the rough patches in between, but are for the most part working together to build this future. And so for me and nouns, that, that, that's where it comes from. It's like the idea of us creating a new kind of internet native organization um, that uses this new technology to bring to people together in a new way. Um, and that experiments with how we can proliferate this like incredibly positive meme while doing good in the world. Like yeah. what, what, what else are we living for? Yeah, exactly. Um, and so <laughs> Uh, it's been, you know, it's been really cool to get to be a part of, uh, you know, I've been following nouns for a long time. I obviously became a part of it last Christmas or two Christmases ago. So Christmas 2022, um, I voted intermittently for a while. And then Wilson Cusack with vote with reason really <laughs> shamed me into voting on every single thing. And with a reason, fellow, every fellow single coin time. Base alum now. <laughs> yeah. You know, fellow, fellow base team member. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, I now try and vote every single prop. Um, I just, I had to do a Amazing. key rotation, so I missed a few. Um, but it's, you know, it's, I feel like nouns is such a, it's such a beautiful experiment. And there's so many of the most creative, um, thoughtful builders who are kind of circling, you know, it's still a small number, but who are like circling that space and being like, how can we contribute in some way or another? So uh, I honestly just feel grateful to get to be a part of it. And, get to be here now at this time in history, you know, it yeah. does feel like we're in the process of transforming the way the world works. Um, and it takes time, but getting to be here and getting to be at what feels kind of like the center of it, it's pretty special. Yeah, absolutely. And that's something I've been pondering a bit lately because I'm, I'm kind of terrible with the time predictions of how long things are going to take like when when we first get inspired by, like, my, my oh, it's happening way right now <laughs> and then and it takes longer and you know like just for example the etf thing took a decade instead of like oh it's gonna happen next year yeah. um you know and that's been i remember happening. thinking in like 2014 that's like it's gonna happen yeah. next year <laughs> it's been non-stop just like the, this, that, such that looming thing and and i mean it, it i think it happens with all the technology but i've been thinking and pondering about how um, you know, the overlap of how things tend to take longer than you expect. 
mm -hmm. uh, to happen and reach mass scale globally, but tied in with the, you know, the speed, the exponential growth of tech and things like that. So I think like, I think things are actually starting to happen quicker. And yeah. it's something that I find fascinating about this space in particular and hadn't really seen it until I found nouns and started exploring this ecosystem a bit more where you start to think about these things and are inspired by the things other people are already thinking about it too, or they do within the next six months. And then things are being built around those, those thoughts, instead of it being like a, a 20 year process for this totally. kind of sci-fi future thing, you know, it, it's like, it's actually all happening and it seems like it's speeding up. And I think, like you said, we're here for a very pivotal, pivotal moment as we transition into this new economy. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And, you know, I think we see it every day with um, teams that, you know, both our team, but teams building on base, you know, the the level of impact that you can make as an individual engineer as a very small team right now building on chain, you can have like literally 10x the leverage of what you used to be able to do building off chain, you know, like Uniswap, mm -hmm. the original version of Uniswap was built by one engineer, Coinbase Exchange took 50 engineers to build in years. And yeah. so, I mean, not the original one, but like in order to maintain it, like once you deploy yourself, it's there forever. And I think the two big things that I see amplify this on chain is one, um, everything's by default composable. And so once someone builds one thing, everyone else can build on top of it. So we're not yeah. just like continually reinventing things inside yeah. of like big companies. Instead, we're just like someone contributes something. Okay, boom, boom, boom. We get to, to build on top of it. And then the other thing, um, I think this is particularly true in Ethereum and, and layer twos is that everything's open source. And so, and, and increasingly CCO. And so if you're making an innovation or like it's shared open with the world, and that means that not only can you usually compose on top of it, but you can like learn what the person did and see how they built the thing. And then you can iterate on and experiment with it. And I think yeah. those two forces, the composability and the transparency are these massive, massive multipliers um, that are making it so, you know, we are accelerating. And so that these systems are getting built faster and faster. And with AI, and, and I think then it's only going to increase. Yeah. Maybe also the financialization too, even though we don't want to focus on that, that part of it, maybe as a primary focus, but just having, you know, being able to build on Ethereum, having money be composable also, you know, and being able to tie that in because money is a big part of how we transact with this so, species. So. And, and that we're opening up the, the um, kind of audience and aperture of who can contribute to everyone. Where it's not like, yeah. oh, now you can only like build if you have access to like these systems or these markets. But it's like, no, literally, if you have an internet connection, you can go and compose and you can go yeah. and leverage these open source things. You can contribute to, to the on-chain economy. Like that, like we've 10x the number of people, we've 10x the composability, we've 10x the transparency and all of that's like massively accelerating how quickly this change is happening. I mean, yeah. like you look you look at what we've done, you know, Ethereum launched in 2015. Um, we've, we've rebuilt massive financial systems and massive social systems that it took hundreds of years to build. And we've done it in like seven years. And yeah. so like, you know, it feels slow at times, but in any reasonable sense of like what is going on, I think it's actually very, very fast and it's only accelerating. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Well, speaking of builders deploying on chain, uh, by the time this comes out, it's going to be coming out next Monday. We'll be launching the Yellow Collective on the 18th, so in a couple of days from from now, live, which is exciting. Uh, so we just wanted to ask you maybe for some advice. What what would you say is the best thing for us to focus on in those you know important early days to make sure the Yellow Collective becomes you know a positive force in the base ecosystem? Because you've had a lot of experience building teams and building communities yourself in your work. So we'd love to hear any advice that you have to share. Yeah, well, I think y'all are off to a great start. Um, I think you guys get culture and, and community building better than anyone. Um, and so that's very inspiring. I mean, I think the thing that I say to a lot of people is um, the most important thing is like the first few people who you bring in. And I think with DAOs, like that's even more so true. And so figuring yeah. out like, you know, when people start to participate in Yellow Collective, how do you like nurture and support those folks to feel excited and to feel included and to feel like a part of it? How do you give people who are interested in participating like a bite-sized way of getting involved so they can do something and feel accomplished? I mean, like they're a part of it and like they mm -hmm. made an impact so that then they can take a next step 
to doing something bigger. Um, I really think that like doing those two things like nurturing and then kind of giving um, incremental stepping stones is super, super important for getting that initial like, you know, 100 true fans or, you know, you know, true fans of the community who want to come and not just like speculate or buy things for a price, but they want to come and create and they want to be a part of something bigger than themselves. And that I think is that's the hardest thing to do, but it's the hardest thing to do. And it's not that hard. If you have intentionality and you use the tools that are out there in crypto and you have great leaders like um, you, Toady and Ben, who I've seen lead, you know, relentlessly. I mean, like how many straight TNS shows have you done at this point? Like 600? I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed not to have the number handy, but it's over 500. It's like 540. <laughs> right. Like, you know, you, you guys, you guys already have this down. And so I just say, keep doing what you're doing. Keep bringing people in. Keep being just such positive forces of light in this community and it'll all come together and be great. I'll also just say thank you. Like, you know, I, I bought my noun, uh, on like, like in a way connected to the TNS cause you guys were, um, you know, picking the heads and, and made it possible. Yeah. Although I was sad that you guys got another snowman the next <laughs> day. day. I was like, come, come on. Guys. Yeah, like, I want to. I wanted my moment. Late. I want to feel special. We diluted for one you by day. two x immediately. <laughs> um, no, so, but I feel like it, it. 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 The level of relentlessness that you have brought to the noun show and to educating the world about what's crypto and what's nouns and doing it in such a positive way with so much energy. I mean, I did on chain summer um, where every day I did an on chain story for thirty days, yeah. and I, I thought that. I was going to die. Like I got to the end of 30 days. I was like, We've died I can't six times. Yeah. <laughs> like, I can't show up again for this. Um, and so watching you do this and, and bring together such an incredible community has been an inspiration. Um, and uh, it, it kind of inspired the on-chain stories concept um, and the idea of doing it every day. And so awesome. thank you. Thank you for all your leadership. And I'm so excited to get to build with you and everyone else in the yellow collective on base. Sometimes, you know, you just say, let's, what if we just did this every day and you don't really think it through? <laughs> like, I remember when we, when we had uh, Jack Butcher on our, on our pod and, and uh, Cardinal, one of our, the co host for that day, asked him, you know, do you ever regret, like, do you ever look at 200 sets and be like, what the hell did I, like, what did I bite yeah. off here? Cause he's like 30 sets into 200, right? It's going to take him two years to do all the sets. And, I, and he's like, well, you know, we kind of knew what we were getting into and we're enjoying it. But sometimes you just got to pick a direction and, and start walking. Yeah, that's how I feel about the uh, million builders, billion users. I like said that one day and now it's like, <laughs> if I don't get there, like, I'm going to be here just chopping wood for the rest of my life. Until we You're get like, to that did number. I accidentally add something to Coinbase Canon? My bad. <laughs> it's a, well, it's good a news. Canon we're, we're, here. we're here to help. So yeah. it's let's, massive let's team get effort. to that many. Yeah, it's going to be that. awesome. It's going to take some time, but it's going to be awesome. Yeah. I, I think we have time for maybe one more question from Farcaster because I had a couple here that people had taken the time mm -hmm. to write down and we're coming up on the hour. But I think this, there's one here that, that's pretty good. Uh, so uh, Samia, Samia Saxena asks, uh, what can builders that do not want to run a startup or company do on base? What are the open source primitives that the ecosystem needs that builders can contribute to? I thought that was a good one maybe for us to cap off. Yeah, that's a great that's a great one. Um, well, one kind of fun thing just to shout out here is um, starting next week, I think uh, we're working, uh, participating in a campaign that like the Ethereum Foundation and this other organization called Learn Web 3 is running, I think, um, where we're, we're going to be tagging like good first issues on base.org um, that could be a great thing for people to contribute to. So these will be like easy little things that you could fix on base on our website and our documentation and our bridge. Um, and so if you're looking for like a cool way to contribute to base, um, that's a great way to get started. Uh, it's kind of like a little bounty a, program sort of thing. Yeah, like, like a little bounty yeah. program. Um, and we'll, we'll be around to support folks in, in making their first contributions. Um, so I think that's a, that's a good one. Um, you know, I, I'd say in terms of other things to build, the thing that you're gonna enjoy building is something that's meaningful and interesting to you. Like a lot, of, I get asked this question a lot and it's maybe an unsatisfying answer, but the thing that I say is find the thing that you're most interested in and then what the intersection is of that and on chain and then go do something there and just try something simple to start. Like if you're, the thing you love is 
plants, go write a little smart contract that spits out a little pixel art of a plant and let people mint it. Like who knows what will come of it, but just doing something at the intersection of your passion and this new technology is going to get you started. It's going to get other people kind of interested in what you're doing and it's going to start sparking other ideas for you. And so there's not some list that is going to be canon where it's like, if you just do this, it's going to be great. The thing that's going to be great is you finding your purpose on chain. Um, and that's most likely to be at the intersection of your interests in crypto. I was going to say something I've noticed over the years is like the things that you build, if you build it for you, because it's useful for you, then you realize, oh, this is what everyone wants. Totally. <laughs> you know what I mean? And if you try totally. to build for everyone else, you're like, you, you don't get What am there. I doing? <laughs> yeah. 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 If, totally. if we didn't love yeah. nouns, we would never have made it through 555 uh, spaces. Wherever <laughs> exactly. And I happen. think this yeah. is the cool thing about nouns too, is like you have food nouns and you have alpine nouns, right? You have yeah. people yeah. who have said, oh, I'm going to find the intersection of what I love and nouns. Exactly. And yeah. then they've created that. You have NARS, you know, like. And, and now we're bringing that. Alps and NARS on that base jump. Like, we're going to try and combine everything. Let's just bring it all. Yeah. Bring that. Bring yeah, everyone yeah. into layer two. And just, yeah. It's, uh, all, I think it's all a your good base journey. are belong to you, I think. Is what yeah. All your base are belong to you. That's okay. right. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Uh, it was as amazing as I expected it to be. I love chatting with you, Jesse. And of course, you're welcome back on the pod anytime. And we're uh, super excited to see what happens with base in 2024. Awesome. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Ben. So great. Yeah, thanks, Ben. Thanks, guys. All right. Well, we will see you on chain. See you on chain. Thanks for having me. This is awesome. Love yeah. it. Great conversation. Um, felt I haven't done a pod like this is the first podcast I've done in five months, maybe a while. Um, and it felt like I did so many podcasts during on chain summer and they all felt the same by the end. And this yeah. one actually felt fresh and new oh, and man. like we were talking about the future. So thanks all for right. Thank you. That's great to be yeah, back. Cool. Appreciate it. Okay. Thanks guys. Okay.